And we're going to start with plastic peel. All right. Man, this thing looks clean. I got to tell you that. Looks pretty clean. All right. Um, yeah, so this is the Dasaita 11.6 inch universal car stereo. Um, I have it currently in my 2015 Jeep Wrangler. Um, honestly, I really like this. That being said, let's start with a quick unboxing. All right, so let's get on with a quick unboxing of what's in the Dasaita box. It's very, very big. So we're just gonna open it up and see what we have here. So we've got a warranty card. Um, I think this is actually pretty important. So keep that here. And then we have user manual, which I'll go through later, but it looks pretty generic. Uh, most important thing is gonna be the installation instructions, which doesn't, um, it doesn't actually show you how, because it actually depends on from car to car. So most important is for you to contact the, the Saita, make sure that you have the correct information and the correct uh, car model that you're gonna buy. So this is the screen. Yeah, there we go. Oh, it's actually really heavy, um, which is not a bad thing. Um, yeah, so it's got a little protective plastic over it. I'm gonna keep this uh, on the unit first uh, until we actually install it. But on the side, we have some buttons. We have a reset button, a, I don't know what that is. And we should have a microphone. No, there isn't a microphone port here. And of course, on the back, we have the uh, mount, which is very, very heavy duty, which I think is good. Um, and yeah, so let's put this aside and look at what else we have inside the box. Okay. That's going to be hard to take out. Ah, all right. Okay. Now, this is the actual unit itself. So, um, what we have here is the top of the car, car entertainment system. Um, there are all the uh, slots here that tells you what each of these uh, units are or each of these holes are for. You also have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, which is your uh, cable units, um, which is what you're supposed to plug in. Um, so let's look at it from this angle over here. And as you can see, let's just focus it a little bit. Uh, here we have a GPS antenna. We also have a Wi-Fi antenna uh, here. And these are all your various plugs you use. And then there's another plug over here. Uh, from what I remember, uh, because I have a Jeep Wrangler, so they had to give me a special, uh, they, had to, they had to give me a special cable. This guy right here, right here. So as you can see, this right there, let's just, you know what, let's just open it up and I'll show you what I mean. But if you have a Wrangler, Wrangler JK specifically, um, then this will be for you as well. But basically what happens is this gray part, it plugs into the carport. And then this is actually an adapter that communicates with the Jeep itself. And this goes right in here. And actually, I believe this is the only plug actually that you plug into the back, apart from your GPS and your Wi-Fi antenna. And then of course, I think there's also a microphone port or microphone jack as well. Um, looking at the other sides, nothing over here, nothing over here. And then of course on the front, we have the actual mount for the LCD screen. Uh, the mount for the LCD screen also has screws, which you're supposed to screw in. That's going to be really hard to do actually, just because of how little space there is. So I'm going to have to see how I can do that and um, how that'll work. Um, as you can see right here, it says M4 and M3. So you have your M4 screws, which are supposed to screw in here. And then your M3 screws, which are supposed to screw in uh, here, I think. Yeah, I think here. Anyway, we'll see. Um, let's put this down and look at the rest of the cables that we got with this unit. So um, I've already showed you this cable, which is the one that's specifically for my Jeep Wrangler. And let's see what else we have here. Now this, I believe, is the power unit. We'll see. Um, I can't tell. Yep, power unit. You can see it says power cable over there. 
just focus it a little bit. Yeah, power unit over there. And what else do we have here? Um, ah, okay. So this is also specific to Jeep, I believe. And I think if you get another car, they'll send you something else. But this is actually the Jeep Wrangler backup camera cable. So basically you unplug this from whatever backup camera you have in your Jeep and then you plug it in here and this plugs into there. So what else do we have here? That, that's your, as you can see, it says that's your GPS antenna. And that goes on the back over here. Lots of plastic, man. Okay. That's your microphone. Um, yeah, I'll have to figure out where I want to stick this. This is, uh, I don't know how good the microphone will sound. I'm actually, I'm actually a little bit worried just because I know that microphones that come with these stereo units usually aren't the best. So I'm curious to see how this sounds. Um, yeah, we'll see. What else do we have here? Okay, so we've got, I think these are the more generic cables here. So, what? Well, okay, that's a lot of cables. Uh, that I believe is your Wi-Fi antenna. So that I believe goes right here. I don't know how good the Wi-Fi reception is gonna be though with this antenna, but uh, who knows. Now this is your generic cabling, I believe. Um, rear in, rear out, front in, front out. So I think if you have a specific generic subwoofer, you would basically um, plug this in here and this, these cables would go into your stereo system. So if you had some sort of aftermarket or uh, regular market, then you could use those. And of course you have two, uh, this, uh, this one, sorry, is for your audio. And this one I believe is for, yeah, so you have your camera in, your video in, aux in, aux left, aux right. So this is your video multimedia as well. Uh, oh, they give you a USB-C cable. So I'll have to figure out where this goes, but I believe it goes right there. Right there. Um, okay. Oh, there's another one with, that's where it goes. So you have two more USB cables as well as a, let's see what it says. USB plus microphone cable. So that's where your microphone cable goes. It plugs into here and plugs straight into there. Um, okay, so we've gone through almost all of the stuff and here is, here are your M4 and M3 bolts, as you can see, M4, M3 over there. And finally, these are brackets. I'll have to figure out how to use them. But for now, um, that's all. Yeah, that's all we have in the box actually. There's nothing else in here. So let's uh, go open the car and see what we got. All right, I just gonna cut in here just to say that I am very, very impressed with Decita's support. So you'll see that this box here, it actually didn't fit in this field because it was a double din and they sent me a double din and it didn't fit because because of this frame that most likely most, most people didn't see and, and neither did I really because you see this, this frame here it's only for single din or it, it's more like 1.5 din so we really didn't fit so i was all stressed out i was like you know what i will review the actual android but i i can't review the install because it just won't go in so i'll i'll, I'll review it i'll get it to plug in and everything and then i'll review the features of it but it, it's just not going to be installed and they said you know what can you wait one month and i'm like um can i wait one month i guess uh because we'll send you a bracket so i'm like okay sure wait one month i wait a month and a half and i'm like guys what's going on and i'm getting anxious because like bro what's going on and then I'm, a month like a month and a half later this shows up right this box shows up right here right and this box is empty right so i had to transfer all the internals like the cpu and everything from the other box to this one it wasn't very difficult um and they also actually custom made these brackets for me see that they custom made these brackets and I already tested it, but it fits perfectly right here. Bang, bang on. I'm, I'm very, very impressed. So I'm just going to install this and, um, and then we'll go on and I'll show you the whole thing. All right, I'm going to start with a couple of things that I really like about this. First of all, the screen, 11.6 inches, 1920 by 1080. It looks absolutely very, very good especially for you know video i'm i'm just gonna open it up 4k and then i'll show you what i like about this uh let's see
my go-to video here. And of course we have ads. All right. I mean, it looks pretty good, even the ads actually. So let's turn the volume down because I don't, I don't want to get copyrighted. So we're just going to turn that down and okay, I'm going to get, I'm definitely going to get copyrighted and skip that. Okay, just look at the quality of this video. Like, uh, I'm just gonna double check it's streaming in 1080p. It is 1080p 60 FPS. I mean, it looks absolutely beautiful. I'm just gonna let it play and talk a little bit. Um, this is basically tablet levels of quality. Um, the color reproduction is absolutely on point. It's, I gotta say, a thousand times better than my old Join 10.1 inch unit. Um, the brightness is actually quite bright. Um, you should be able to see this even in very, very bright sunlight, um, even with sunglasses on, which I did test. So you should be able to see this um, in most places because the sun is probably brighter in like, I don't know, equator countries compared to now or where I am, which is Canada. But yeah, I'm just absolutely blown away by how good the screen is. Um, there is one thing I don't like about the screen and that's the minimum brightness. Bro, it's so bright at night, man. Uh, you don't even, oops, I turned up a Wi-Fi by mistake. So if I turn this all the way down, that's pretty, that's still pretty bright. Like for nighttime use, it's pretty, it's, it's really bright. So I am not a fan of that. Uh, this is a problem with most, if not all Chinese Android tablet head units, um, but yeah. And of course, this one I got is a plug and play unit uh, for my Jeep Wrangler. You plug in one plug, uh, GPS and radio and a mic, and then you're done. So um, audio is going to sound pretty good. I'm going to play some Adventures by A. Himitsu. Oh, you know what? Before I go into audio, the one thing about the touchscreen is that it's, well... The touchscreen here is fairly sensitive, but it's not as sensitive as like an Android tablet. It's like somewhere in between. So there are some tablets where you type and then you might tap and then nothing happens. But this one, when you tap something will happen. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the touchscreen calibration a little bit more, but for now, I'll just let you listen to this sound over here. Um, I mean, it's the quality of my sound system. So not really a test of, of this over here, but um, I'll let you play. Um, so what I'll do is I will uh, show you the settings here. You can actually play around with the audio settings here. Uh, I don't remember where it is. Is it here? No, it's not. So most of the settings are located in here. Uh, amplifier um, there. You can play with the settings here. You can play with, uh, for example, the equalization. You can play with the uh, bass, sub, loudness, etc. And then finally, you can play with this, like this. You can just direct it to wherever you want. I just have it in the middle because that's usually how it is. So if I go all, that resets it to the middle. And then, of course, you can go specialty as well, which um, this is actually not as accurate as my car because my car actually has seven speakers, not, f well, four. Um, so, um, yeah, it doesn't show it, but it does adjust the audio properly. Um, okay. So let's go back to, okay. So this is the interface of the launcher, the launcher or of the stereo. The stereo comes with its own launcher. And as you can see here, um, I think it's quite innovative. It's probably one of, it's okay. It's the best stereo launcher I have been given, right? On one portion here, you have Google Maps um, and you can play around with this. The speed does actually work. Um, and then of course this um, just um, cements your location. You can minimize, maximize. It's very responsive. Uh, you can see traffic. And then of course you have voice commands over here. 
Um, this one actually has a microphone in here, actually. See what I mean? Um, the microphone actually works, but they give you an extra microphone. Okay, whatever. Uh, <laughs> it actually comes with another microphone that you can attach if you want uh, right here, but I didn't because there's already a microphone in here already. So that's actually pretty convenient. Um, you also can set your home and your work, oops, home and work locations, but I didn't set it because I don't want you to know where I live. Um, and yeah, and then on this side, you have audio. Um, let's, oops. So as you can see, yeah, so audio on this side. Now, are there things I don't like about this launcher? Actually, yes, this is not, while this is a good launcher for a, you know, a stock launcher for a stereo system, it's not my favorite launcher because I want this division to be like all the way over here. I don't need such a big thing for audio and I don't, I don't want just to have half of it for, um, for maps. So as a result, I use FCC launcher which gives me this there see that's what i want right something nice and big for traffic and then i have my uh, little player down here uh, controlling uh, brightness here um, weather time apps over here so that's exactly what i want um, nevertheless that's a very small issue because fcc launcher is free there is a paid version that i did pay for like as you can see it's not here um, but um, the paid version just gives you i don't know like like unlimited speed uh, limits uh, numbers and stuff like that but otherwise i'd highly recommend fcc launcher but the stock launcher is actually pretty good as well uh, so let's switch back to vivid launcher and we'll stay it there so one of my favorite features of this is actually the screen timeout feature, especially at night. Like I was talking about, the screen doesn't actually get very dim at night, so it gets really distracting, you know, when you're driving, it's not a night out, and then this screen gets distracted. So, so you can actually set it to turn off or switch to like a screensaver mode after 15 seconds, and it's already been 15 seconds and it hasn't switched. So let me go and double check here. So we have, yeah, so we have the audio screen timeout at 15 seconds. I don't know why it's not working. It used to work just now. So I'll just do this for now. Um, we'll wait 15 seconds and uh, see if it works. So, um, yeah, my favorite, yeah, that, that was my favorite feature. <laughs> I don't know why it doesn't work properly, but it, it, it should, it should turn off after a couple of seconds. Um, it might actually need music to be playing. So I'm just gonna turn the volume all the way down and hit play. And then hopefully it turns off after 15 seconds. But yeah, again, favorite aspect of this device is the screen. It's just, it, it's nice. Um, the other thing as well is um, while we're waiting for this to turn off, which I don't think it is, I don't know what happened. It like it worked yesterday i'm not sure why but the build of this like this tablet's actually really nice um and i'm just actually going to show you this so i'm just going to turn this off and just wait for this thing to turn off and because i didn't actually bolt this down because because i wanted to show you but the build is actually really nice it's like a nice nicely built tablet over here so i really like it it is really heavy but of course there are screws to bolt it down as you saw in the unboxing i just this chip here the rk rock chip 3399 is actually capable of playing video games as well not super intense but i could play battle of polytopia which is a fairly um, light game and i'm just going to show you honestly this is actually really nice for playing games you should not do that if you're in the honestly you, you shouldn't be playing games in the car even if you're not the uh even if you're not the driver so um i'll just do this but look at that. Honestly, it looks really, really nice. Like if you want to play, I don't know, you're, you're, you're waiting for somebody, um, you can just play games and it's, it's actually nice. Um, so in this one over here, um, you know, Netflix, Netflix, um, Amazon Prime, they all work on this device. And I'm just gonna show you here. Um, I don't believe this has a wide vine, like the highest level of wide vine because if you look at the, eh, okay. 
I'm just going to look really closely at the quality. I'm going to pause it because I do not want to get copyright strighted, copyright striped here. But um, yeah, so that is definitely not 1080p. Um, it looks, it should look a lot better. So I believe it's running at 480p resolution here. Um, so I think it has like the basic level of wide vine certification. You can, so basically what I'm saying is you can watch, you probably cannot watch anything at 1080p, which um, I'm not, like I'm not happy about it, but I'm, I also don't expect all these apps to run at 1080p. Um, okay. Now, uh, what I really like actually are these buttons over here. Um, you can actually remap each of these buttons to whatever you want, and I'll show you how to do that in a bit. But for example, I have home button. So I set this to home. And then this one I set, I don't remember what I set this to. And I set this to something else. And then this is volume up, volume down. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna show you where to set all that now. Oh, wrong one. So a lot of a lot of settings are in here. So if you want to go set some stuff, you got to actually go to factory settings and then you got to type in the password one, two, six, which is generic and hit OK. And then you go to key study and you can go to panel key study and you can do that. Oop. Um, yeah, there's also the multitasking window as well. Got to go back in here. Uh, okay. Yeah, so there's the... Uh, was it touch key study? Nope. Um, panel key study. Yeah, no. So, but yeah, uh, you can adjust it from this area over here. Um, but yeah, you have to hit button panel reset and then you can set whatever you want on here. So let me show you um, what we have from the settings in here first. So everything here is pretty normal stuff, right? You have your Bluetooth, your Wi-Fi, uh, and then you finally have your car settings. And here you can set the various, you know, the theme for this entire uh, uh, Android system and the steering wheel keys. Now this is the one area that doesn't work. I'm not sure why actually, but as you can see, I tried to set my steering wheel buttons and it didn't work. I think that's partially my fault because I should have asked if this specific model was compatible with the steering wheel buttons and I didn't. And, and then when it came, then I asked them whether, whether the steering wheel buttons will work. And then uh, they said, oh, you should do this and this and this and this, but it didn't work. So uh, not super surprised. Uh, but I'm also not super shook up about it because the most important thing for me are the volume buttons. I need volume buttons for uh, um, for it to work. So I definitely need that. So I'm that that's the most important thing for me. Um, and then we have uh, Amplifier, which I showed you before, which is the audio stuff. Uh, navigation, I'm actually not quite sure what to do here because um, you have navigation application options. You can set your navigation, which I have as Google Maps. Navigation monitoring, I'm actually not sure what this does. And then you have a navigation sound mode, which is basically, I believe what is going to be the um, like sound, like turn left here, turn right there and stuff like that. And then you have your GPS monitor, which tells you all your GPS information. Um, I actually never got this to show up for anything, but the GPS does work. So I'm not sure what's going on there. That, that's the thing about these Chinese, ta um, Chinese tablet stereos is that some things work and some things don't. And then there's really nothing, <laughs> nothing you can, nothing can do about that. Uh, voice assistance, again, it's, it's set at Google. So normal stuff. Uh, driving settings, allow to watch video while driving. You need to enable this if you wanna watch a video while the car is moving. Um, which <laughs> you you shouldn't, but I do have it enabled. So and then you have block notifications and a status bar while driving. Networks settings while driving as well. These, these are all safety features. And you have extra settings. And uh, here we have shutdown delay when ACC is off. Auto sleep. Yes, that is what you want. You want it to turn off and sleep when your power is off for your for your car because you you don't want it to train your battery. Play music, uh, play automatically when USB or SD is inserted, whatever. Reversing X mirror off. I don't have a dash cam connected to my car, or sorry, I don't have a rear view camera connected to my car, so I don't have this set on. Reversing volume is on, and then I, uh, you can basically set it to go lower as you reverse so that you're not distracted by the music. 
rear view ruler. That is the setting for um, having a ruler here so that you can see the um, exactly where your car is um, and it tells you where to go. The battery voltage display, I have that set as off. And then we have the factory settings. One, two, six. Uh, and here we have a couple of things here. Um, I don't, I didn't really touch most of these things. Um, for example, here you've got Bluetooth, DVD, TV, TPMs, CarPlay, radio, DVR, blah, 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 blah. okay. Car logo, you can change this to something else. You can set your radio settings here. You can set your voice settings here and the audio volumes as well. And there's a key study that I did tell you about already. And then we have others as well. This is the model. We have brightness adjust, controlled by headlamp. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, controls by headlamp. Um, I actually haven't tried it, so let's see. Oh yeah, that's cool, look at that. So I turn my headlamp on and it turns, that, that, that's actually kind of cool. So basically if it turns on, it automatically lowers the brightness. Actually, I like that because my previous head unit, the joint didn't have that. Front camera, I don't have a front camera attached to this, at least I have a dash cam up there, but uh, whatever. Um, app installed enabled, steering wheels, keys assigned. Maybe I'll switch it to can key, maybe that'll work. Um, panel LED, top, uh, RGB LED, panel LED control by headlight. I like that, I should, you know what? I am going to do that because I like that. Uh, reversing brightness, boot default volume, knob modes, yeah. Um, here you actually have quite a few selections as well. So there, now they're always turned on. So I actually like that. So let's go back here. Uh, actually, I am going to hit cancel and we'll play with other stuff. But then there's also, oh, uh, we also have developer options and I'll just go through those as well. Um, yeah, this is four gigs of memory. Uh, kind of wish it had eight, but four is enough for now. Does mean it'll get a little bit slow once in a while, but yeah, there's really nothing special here in the developer options. Um, yeah. Okay, now on to uh, a couple of things I don't like. Um, I already talked about the touchscreen is a little bit not so sensitive, so I don't really like that. I don't like how the steering wheel controls don't really work. Uh, also, one of the things I don't like is when you're typing something, it comes up with this like, uh, actually, let me show you in another option because it seems like that one is actually programmed for it. But for example, if I go to car and I type in my factory settings, it comes up with this box, which I think is normal in Android, but then because this tablet is so big and then you can't really rotate it to portrait, then it just, like there's this big box and then you type one, two, six, for example, and you click done. Like, why couldn't you just type it in there? Why did it have to pop up this massive box? That's uh, more of a fault of Android more than this manufacturer, but nevertheless, I don't really like it. Oh, here's one more thing I don't like as well, is I don't like how this top bar keeps disappearing because um, you shouldn't be using this when you're driving, I know that. But at the same time, if you need to, let's say, go home, like sure, I have this button, but at the same time, I would rather have this bar here all the time that I need to go home, I just click that, or I need to go back, I just click that, or I click that, and uh, it brings my uh, brightness all the way down. Why, why is that, why is this bar constantly disappearing to give you more space. No, I don't want that. That bar should always, always be there. Okay, so uh, last thing to talk about is connectivity. Um, I am actually quite impressed with the Wi-Fi reception on this on this stereo system because my old stereo system, the Join, right now I'm currently about 25 feet from the nearest access point that I have. Um, well, it's a it's a booster, really. It's not really an access point. And when I'm out here, the reception is really bad. I definitely can't stream at 1080p, but here I can, which is very impressive. And Bluetooth, of course, works. The joying I have right now, uh, the Bluetooth is starting to get a little choppy. So again, I can't really tell you an answer whether this will get choppy in two years or not. But um, as of now, yeah, it's actually pretty decent. Oh yeah, one of the things I didn't like as well is that some of the apps are actually not compatible. Like if you open up the Google Play Store, for example, um, and you open up and you search up, let's say like Netflix, right? Netflix. It doesn't show up because it's actually not compatible with this device. But if you install it from an APK installer, which is what I did, and it's actually what you'll have to do for 
uh, Netflix as well as Disney Plus. Um, it will work, as you saw, right? I was uh, watching Netflix and all was good, but it doesn't show up. So it, that, that's actually kind, kind of annoying because I think that this is not a known device and they probably didn't go through the certifications properly. So that's, that's an issue right there. The other thing as well is, um, uh, you know, I can browse pretty easily on this. Uh, not that you should when you're driving, of course. I'm, I, I'm always going to disclaim that, uh, but, it, but it works very well. Um, it works nice and fast and I really have no complaints about this. And of course, the last thing as well is you can actually store videos on here and, and it'll de decode it just, pro um, just fine um, all the way up to actually 4K. So that's actually pretty decent as well. Okay, so uh, in conclusion, what do I think about this? I'll be honest, I really like this tablet. Um, one of the problems I actually encountered was um, <laughs> I got the double DIN version. And as you can see, this is the bracket for the inside of my car. And this gap here is actually 1.9 DINs, really, or 1.8 DINs. So as a result, it didn't fit. I could have bent these back, but I didn't really want to. Uh, so I'm currently looking at other ways to mount it. They, get, they did give me two mounting brackets here for this. Um, but what you should do is you should just check with the Saita when you do place an order, telling them what model car you have, exactly what you have, and then ask them what you think, whether you should get a single DIN or a double DIN instead of just saying, I want a double DIN. Ask them, check on forms as well. Of course, when you buy a stereo like this, you have to do your homework. And one of the things is when I was getting this, I didn't do as much homework as I should. Um, so that resulted in some of the mounting issues that I'm talking about right now. But otherwise, I think it's a, actually a great product. Um, I will say it is very expensive. Um, it cost me 800 Canadian loonies, which I think in American, it's like 550 for this, which is expensive, but that's about the going price for such a large, you know, 11.6 inch tablet. You can actually get it in 13.3 inches as well, which bumps it up to about here, which I didn't get because it was too big and I didn't want to interfere with this. Like, as you can see, that's my uh, left and right already. Oh no, that's not. That's my. Uh, <laughs> that's my um, uh, windshield wipers, as you can see. Uh, so it's already encroaching on the space. That's not super. That's a little bit close, at least for me. But uh, yeah. So um, check it out in the link below. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.